What's behind door number two of your Hagvent calendar? Three months of unadulterated ditch witchery, season of the witch, if you will. Well, it's pilgrimage chic with a flourish of yesterday's makeup. Yes, today is Imbolg or Bridget's Day or St. Bridget's Day or however you refer to it. It's the beginning of spring and it absolutely feels like it. It's really, really uh, sunny outside today and the whole place is warming up as well, which is really, really nice. It's something to do with lambs and daffodils and primroses as well. So happy all of that to you. As you know, I'm a big fan of Bridget, who is essentially the focal point for today's celebrations no matter who you are uh, across the island of Ireland really if you're at all interested in our magical and mythical past then Bridget probably holds some interest for you and maybe you'll want to celebrate this day maybe you won't some years I do and some years I don't a lot of the time I'm lighting my fire still in February anyway so as I'm cleaning out my heart, I'll be thinking of Bridget, I'll dedicate it to her and if you want to and you haven't got a St. Bridget's Cross of your own, sometimes a nice thing to do is to lay your poker and your tongues across each other on your heart in front of your fire and dedicate that to Bridget on Bridget's day. That's kind of a nice thing to do or you can make an offer of cream or butter. This year I have decided to do something that I haven't done in quite a while but something that I really love to do at Imbolg. It's the reason I'm wearing no makeup. I'm going to go and do a pilgrimage from here to her birthplace at Fahert. It's a walk I've done once before and I really enjoyed it, but I did it with other people and found that just to be a little bit distracting. So uh, Dave has agreed to uh, accompany me because it's still a long way in the dark after all. So we're gonna do this walk out there. It's about an hour and a half from the center of town. And that's the thing about pilgrimages is that it doesn't have to be you know days and days of walking uh, it doesn't even have to be hours and hours whatever is enough time for you to make that sort of quiet connection with the energy that you're trying to plug into then you know that's sufficient and it's up to you really what that looks like for me the pilgrimage is going to take us on a route uh, past the mural of bridget in bridge street past uh, where i grew up past the graveyard where I have a lot of relatives buried. So for me, it's a very, very meaningful route and it'll be an absolute pleasure to walk it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely getting a taxi home because I'm no spring chicken anymore. And yeah, I decided to go au natural. Well, I mean, there's a bit of concealer on there, but that's okay. Basically, when I'm wearing makeup, I'm very, very conscious of having it on my face, especially mascara and lipstick. People who wear makeup, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I didn't want the distractions today. I really just wanted to be able to relax into the experience of tuning into Bridget and having the duration of the walk to just really listen for her and to listen and feel for anything that sort of comes my way while I'm walking. As I say, the most important thing is to connect and to tune in and to set your intention while you're doing it. It really is, as far as I'm concerned, quality over quantity. And what I'll do when I get there is just make an offering of some dairy goods, which is something that Bridget is very much associated with. Dairy products in Ireland would have kind of meant abundance and it was sort of the sharing of your wealth to give literally the fat of the land to the gods and Bridget in particular is one who appreciates gifts like that. If you're thinking about doing a pilgrimage to a sacred site in Ireland, a commonly done thing to show respect to the site, first of all, is to ask permission to enter. So if it's not a, a place that's, you know, really open to the public and sort of frequented by visitors, then you might want to just check with the, the guardian of the place. And maybe it's a good idea to check anyway. You know, not all sacred sites hold the same energy for all people, but 
that's a different video. If you see a tree or a bush or something like that that really feels to you like it's guarding over the space that you want to enter into, well, it's a very good idea to ask that guardian first if it's okay to approach and enter and do whatever it is that you intend to do that day and listen clearly for a yes or a no. You may get conditions on which you can enter and I would highly suggest that you take those very seriously. By the way, none of this really applies to uh, fairy rings or the like, because you know how I feel about those. Okay, stay away, it's not worth it. Whatever you're thinking about doing, just don't. The next thing you're gonna wanna do then, if you've asked permission to enter the site and you're happy enough that it's, it's a goer, then you can enter and do a clockwise lap of the place. Again, just paying attention. It's kind of, for me, a symbol of entering and it's also like a two-way thing of the place opening up to you. So as you're walking clockwise around the site, also you should be paying attention to anything that comes to you, whether it's thoughts or feelings or whatever it might be. And the reason that I'm really getting my shit together to go out and do a pilgrimage this year is because I have a request, I have a prayer, and any of you who've been watching the channel over the last couple of months, I'm sure you'll have a pretty good idea of what that is and why I think Bridget with her magic expandy cloak is just the woman for the job too. So I will be making petitions to Bridget while I'm out there and the offerings as well, obviously, because you should never go asking for things empty handed and that includes entering the site. So one other thing is for anyone who isn't really into doing a pilgrimage but wants to connect to Bridget on Imbolg specifically, there's something really, really nice that you can do. It's an Irish tradition going back quite a way. We have a record of it from at least the 1930s and there's no reason to believe that the practice doesn't go back much further than that. Somebody might be able to tell me actually of earlier examples, but the Brat Brige is quite commonly done even to this day by people who love and respect Bridget and the actual brat itself these days is a ribbon or a piece of fabric, any kind of a, a rag or you know a cloth and you take it out and hang it on the bush outside the front of your house for Bridget to touch as she walks by. And in some parts of the country, it's hung from a door, or again, there are different variations on that, depending on where you are in the country. Some people believe that Bridget comes into your house. Other people believe that she's just walking around on the eve of Imbolg, which I realize I've missed that now, and so have you. But then the other thing is, is, is that as far as I know, Imbolg and the date for it is quite subjective, so, it's up to you if you still want to give it a go. Breege might still be out there wandering around, I don't know. I couldn't guarantee it, but uh, <laughs> the idea of hanging this cloth out is that when Bridget touches it, she will bestow healing or protection onto it. Belts and braces, you can actually put those out too instead of a, a ribbon or a cloth. And I just love that, the idea of your magic healing braces, you know, like, how are you all? Who needs some healing? Is that the sound elastic makes? I don't know. So it's just the start of my second day here in Anton Arts Centre. And I thought I'd get this little video shot for you at the beginning to help anchor me as well in the meaning behind today. Because whilst I am going to spend this afternoon working on Anton Bokulnia and maybe even making it into the first chapter. It's nice to have in the back of my mind a goddess who would have been important to people back when the story of Anton Bokulnia was first told and probably also still when it was written down. Bridget has always been an important figure in Ireland in one way or another, be it as the pagan goddess or be it as the Christian saint. And there's still arguments between people as to what she was. And honestly, as a woman who has interests as varied as Bridget did, 
Well, I can say that pigeonholing isn't really helping anyone. She is both. She can be both. The two are not mutually exclusive. And knowing what we know about the Christian church superimposing themselves onto pagan idols in order to seem more relevant to the people that they were trying to convert. You know, as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of case closed. That's why there's a lot of crossover between the two. And there are people out there who have spent lifetimes practicing their own mashup of the two. Oh, I have to stop there though. I have to go down and figure out how this kitchen works and uh, get myself a cup of tea and get some more reading done. Oh yeah, I know I keep talking about this, but I've decided I'm just gonna put up the YouTube membership options at some point this week. And um, if people wanna follow along with reading along on the video, then we can do that. I've been trying to gauge interest and things like that, but look at build it and they will come. So slán agus bánacht, goodbye and good luck to you. Come on, he